Hi everyone. So as it turns out, William Lane Craig has already addressed some of the things I said in my video. William Lane Craig is wrong about cosmology. This was brought to my attention by Ao Chihuahua. A lot of what you have said could have easily been avoided by a simple Google search of what Google of uh, what William Lane Craig has said in response to this. Well, guess what, Ao Chihuahua? It's not that I was unaware of what Craig says in response to his critics. It's that what he says is stupid, and William Lane Craig is still wrong about cosmology. The two premises use different meanings of the phrase begin to exist. You are just assuming here that Craig is talking about ex materia causation, because as far as I'm aware, he has not explicitly stated this. Actually, I just did a quick Google search, and this is what William Lane Craig says himself to this objection. I am using the word cause here simply to mean something that produces something else. Right, but it doesn't matter. He can't possibly mean that everything that begins to exist ex nihilo or that just begins to exist period has a cause because ex materia causation is the only kind of causation we know of for which this premise can be supported. If I understand your point correctly, Craig is saying that because he hasn't specified what kind of cause he's talking about, it's not an equivocation. I don't think that's what the quote was meant to imply, but I'll explain the problem anyway. All feathers are light. Things that are light are not dark. Therefore, no feathers are dark. Does the fact that I don't specify which definition of light I'm using make this argument valid? No. Moving on. The universe is not a thing, but a set of things. Even if everything that begins to exist must have a cause, this doesn't have to apply to the set of all such things. I think your claim that the universe is not a thing is just grasping at straws. This same argument could be applied to people, as we are just collections of things as well. Absolutely correct, and what's true of those things doesn't have to be true of people. We consist of microscopic particles, yet we are not microscopic, just to name one example. Fine, call the universe a thing. It's still a set of things, and to assume that what's true of those things must be true of the universe as a whole is a fallacy of composition. Yes, William Lane Craig uses physics to support the premise that the universe began to exist. However, his argument is a philosophical argument, so you have to understand philosophy to refute it. That should be quite obvious. You are absolutely wrong. Kalam's premises are claims about physics. And if it's bad physics, which it is, then the argument won't stand even if it's valid, which it isn't. Okay, so Martimer81 must be confused because, of course, William Lane Craig is only arguing that evidence supports the conclusion which Martimer81 seems to agree with. Uh, William Lane Craig does not have to prove with 100% certainty that the universe began to exist. No, he doesn't, but he has to make a strong case for it, which neither he nor anyone else has. There are many degrees of certainty. Yes, I think the universe did have a beginning, in the sense that I think time had a first moment. However, to use a courtroom analogy, if I were in the jury and the universe stood accused of having a beginning, I would vote not guilty. I believe the universe is guilty as charged, and that there is evidence to back this up, but there's more than reasonable doubt. This isn't confusion, it's intellectual honesty. And if you're a fan of Craig, I can understand why you're not familiar with that concept. Now, let's go back to that whole cause thing. It appears that Craig pretty much agrees with my definition of cause. Let S be an isolated system, let S of T be the state of S at a time T, and let X be an occurrence which exists in S at a time T1. Then we define the cause of X as the set of conditions present in S of T0, T0 less than T1, which led to S of T1, including X. Craig simply phrases it, the cause of x is the explanation of how x came to be, or came to happen. 
or something like that. The key issue being that he desperately wants to avoid this explanation being a set of conditions that actually applied at an earlier point in time. This is a problem, because conditions that never applied obviously can't lead to anything. The idea of something beginning to exist as caused by something independent of time has to do with something philosophers call ontological priority. Actually, this applies to anything that is caused of things simultaneously. Craig likes to use the example of a chandelier being held up by a chain. The sufficient reason for the chandelier being held up is the chain holding it up. Well, yes, but that's not an example of time-independent or simultaneous causation. Forces don't propagate instantaneously. Or is Craig actually under the impression that forces propagate at infinite velocity? Wow, infinite velocity. Got it. So that's very fast. That's so stupid, the only way I can make fun of it is by quoting a hedgehog disguised as a couch. Damn, I hate Neelix. Craig has actually managed to outstupid the physics of Threshold. Okay, to be serious for a moment, in the example Craig brings up, the force counteracting gravity keeping the chandelier from falling at a point in time T1 was carried by the chain from the ceiling, the walls, the ground, and so on, at a finite velocity starting at an earlier time T0. The fact that the chandelier isn't falling at T1 is the result of the conditions that applied at T0. Like I said, in physics we don't talk about cause and effect. We talk about how systems evolve over time. Laws of physics are descriptions of how the state of a system at one point in time determines the state of a system at a later point in time, or at least the probabilities of the different possible states in the case of quantum physics. Craig bases his argument on misunderstandings of physics. Physics doesn't say that the universe began to exist. It says that there are cosmological models in which it did. And as for physics saying that everything that begins to exist, or at least the universe, has a cause... Well... The problem with this premise is that it is false. There's almost no explanation or justification given for this premise in Dr. Craig's presentation. But there's a bigger problem with it, which is that it is not even false. The real problem is that these are not the right vocabulary words to be using when we discuss fundamental physics and cosmology. This kind of Aristotelian analysis of causation was cutting edge stuff 2,500 years ago. Today we know better. Our metaphysics must follow our physics. That's what the word metaphysics means. And modern physics, you open a quantum field theory textbook or a general relativity textbook, you will not find the words transcendent cause anywhere. I stand corrected, Dr. Carroll. William Lane Craig is not wrong about cosmology. He's not even wrong. See ya.